everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my tutorial channel. Daniel's here and today I'm going to talk about the second part of uh, topic 7. The conference intervals for a population mean when the standard deviation is unknown. And in this part, I'm going to first introduce the student t distribution. Then I'm going to uh, show you how to construct the CIs for uh, a population mean when the standard deviation is unknown. So first, student t distribution. Remember in the last video when um, sigma is known, we have x bar, the symbol mean, follows the normal uh, distribution uh, approximately with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over square vein. And the CI for the population mean is uh, x bar plus or minus z and for half sigma over square root of n. However, uh, sometimes we are not given the, uh, the population standard deviation. And when sigma is unknown, when the standard deviation of the population is unknown, the normal, uh, the assumption that x bar follow the normal uh, distribution is not validated. And we don't know sigma, so we cannot use the standard deviation sigma over square of n. And in that case, we need some replacement. Here, uh, in this video, we will learn that uh, when sigma is unknown, we will use an estimation of sigma, which is s. Here, sigma is the population standard deviation, and s is a symbol standard deviation. So since we don't know sigma, so we use an estimate. We use s to replace sigma and uh, when sigma is unknown the standard uh, normal distribution is not um, applicable so we need another distribution uh, that is the student t distribution basically the student t distribution is just like an approximation of the standard normal distribution and the conference interval will become x bar plus t n minus 1 and for half time s over square of n. Here s over square of n is the standard error for the case when the standard deviation is unknown. And we have the t n minus 1 and for half is the critical value instead of using z and for half. Here we have n minus 1 because um, uh, the student t distribution depending on the area to the left, uh, the area to the right, and um, the decrease of freedom. n minus 1 here is the decrease of freedom of the student t distribution. Just like for standard normal more distribution, we have uh, the mean and sigma for the regular normal distribution. We have mu is not 0, sigma is not 1. So the normal distribution depends on two parameters sigma and mu. For a student t distribution, it totally depends on uh, the degrees of freedom. And when you compare the uh, CI for the uh, population mean when sigma is known and when sigma is unknown, we see that um, sigma is replaced by s. And the critical value is different. The critical value for the case when sigma is known as z and for half, but the critical value for the case when sigma is not known is tn minus 1 and for half. Um, so to study how to, to, to construct the CI for uh, the population mean when sigma is unknown, we need to investigate the student t distribution and we need to um, find the critical value. So that are the two main things that we need to learn today. So let's investigate the student t distribution. Uh, as I said, when the population state innovation is unknown, x bar minus mu over s over a square of n follows the student t distribution with decrease of freedom n minus 1. Uh, so if you look at the graph of 
the student t distribution. The student t distribution depends on the degrees of freedom. So if we compare the graph of the, the different um, student t distribution with different value of the degrees of freedom, we see that the student t distribution, the shape of the student t distribution is quite similar to the standard normal distribution um, graph. However, it's, it's wider, it's uh, more spread than uh, the standard normal distribution. And one more thing when we observe the student t distribution um, graph, we see that when the degrees of freedom increases, the student t distribution, the curve of the student t distribution get closer and closer to the standard normal curve. That's why I said the student t distribution is an uh, approximation of the standard normal distribution when n is sufficiently large. And here we consider when n is um, greater than 30. So uh, one more thing here is one question here is why the degrees of freedom is n minus 1? So uh, in some textbook and some uh, material, some resources, uh, we can find some formal proof why the degrees of freedom of the student t distribution is n minus 1. However, it would be hard for undergraduate student to understand the proof. So in this video, I'm going to give you um, an informal proof why the decrease of freedom is n minus 1. So suppose that you have a symbol of 10 students and you know the symbol mean grade is x bar. You know the, the, uh, the mean, the average grade of the whole symbol. So in this case, you actually should need the grades of only 9 students and the last student grade can be calculated because we know the x bar so we can use x bar and the grade of the, f the first nine student to figure out the grade of the remaining student that's why the nine students the first nine students are independent we can assign any number but the last student the the number is not random it totally depends on the first nine numbers so here we have nine independent items and one uh, dependent items. And um, you see that the, the, symbol, the symbol side here is 10. And the, the degrees uh, of freedom, the number of freedom items is 9. So this is an illustration of why the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. However, this is not a form of proof, so it just helps you to figure out the degrees of freedom quick. Um, so go back to the student t distribution here. We have some properties. Uh, first, just like normal distribution, standard normal distribution, the curve of the student t distribution is symmetric around 0. Um, is has unique mode. But the spread of the student t distribution is wider than the spread of the standard normal distribution. So that is about student t distribution. Now we learn how to find the critical value. Um, similar to the critical value in the um, normal distribution, we also have a new notation for the critical value for student t distribution. So here let's alpha be any number between 0 and 1. The notation t alpha n minus 1 refers to the t value with an area of alpha to its right with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And the notation t alpha half n minus 1 refers to the t value with an area to uh, the uh, uh, with an area of alpha half to its right. So to construct the uh, conference interval, suppose we want to construct um, 1 minus alpha ci, then the critical value should be t alpha half and minus t alpha half, like on this um, figure. 
the, the student t distribution is symmetric around zero and we if we want the area in the middle is one minus alpha then the two bounding numbers are t alpha half and minus t alpha half to find the t alpha half we see that the area t is right is alpha half and when uh, for student t distribution the critical value can be computed either using technologies or a table called uh, table A3 or a student t distribution table and since this curve is symmetric around zero the lower point the lower uh, the lower power uh, the lower bound of um, the CI is minus T and for half because this is the negative of T and for half. And the area to its left is N for half, the area to its right is 1 minus N for half. Example A single random sample of site 10 is drawn from a normal population. Find the critical value T and for half with the degrees of freedom in minus 1 for this 95% CI. So here is the curve, the student um, t distribution curve. We expect to have 95% CI, so we we want the middle area to be 0.95. So the uh, the area on the two tails is 0 0.05 in total, and because it's symmetric, so the left tail and the right tail have the uh, have the same area. The left tail area is 0 0.025 and the right tail area is 0 0.025. So uh, here we use the table of the student t distribution. We see that if we want the confidence interval to be 95% and the decrease of freedom is 9, the number should be 2.262 because here the sample size is 10. So the decrease of freedom is 9. And we use a student t distribution table. We got um, 2.262 as the positive critical value, and minus 262 is the negative uh, critical value. Uh, one more information here is sometimes you cannot find the decrease of freedom on the the confidence level. You see that the third column represents the decrease of freedom. Sometimes you, you might have the decrease of freedom uh, 119 to 65 which is not on the table. So in that case we basically use the last line of the um, uh, the student t distribution or you use the um, standard normal distribution table because when the decrease of freedom is sufficiently large the student t distribution is actually uh, the normal distribution. Here on this picture I have just a short version of um, the student t distribution table but if you look at the full version the last slide is um, uh, the numbers on the last slide is similar to uh, this normal distribution. So that's how we find the critical value and how we um, find the decrease of freedom. Uh, now we we have all we need, so let's go ahead and construct the CI for mu when sigma is unknown. We also have, have uh, some steps to construct a 1 minus alpha CI for mu when sigma is unknown. First, check the assumption. Remember, if n is greater than 30, uh, x bar follow a normal distribution approximately. So to make use of the student t distribution, the sample size should be less than 30. So here, if n is greater than 30, we use normal distribution. If n is less than 30, we use student t distribution. Step 2, we have to find the point SMA, which is x bar. Uh, x bar is the symbol mean and also we have to find the same symbol standard deviation which is s so this is the first difference between sigma is known and sigma is unknown when sigma is known we have to use s s is an estimation uh, an estimate of sigma and then we have to find the critical value t and for half and minus one using either a3 table the student t distribution table or using technology 
then we have to find the standard error s over square of n and the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 these are easy to be computed then we use the point estimate and the margin of error to construct the CI the margin of error here is basically the critical value times standard error just like for the case when sigma is known so we have the confidence interval is point estimate plus or minus the margin of error the margin of error is the critical value times the standard error the point estimate is x bar and the critical value is tn for half n minus 1 the standard error is s over square of n and then once we have um, the ci we can interpret the result so that is the procedure of uh, constructing the ci for mu when sigma is unknown now let's look at an example example two a food chemist analyzed the calorie contained for a popular type of chocolate cookie following are the numbers of calories in a symbol of eight cookies 113 114 111 116 115 120 118 and 116 by a 98 conference interval for the mean number of calories in this type of cookie the solution the first step we need to uh, verify if the same will mean is less than 30 and here the same will mean uh, the same size is 8 which is less than 30 so the student uh, the student t distribution is applicable the step 2 we need to find a point estimate and the point estimate here is just x bar which is 115.375 and the standard deviation is 2.8253. Uh, step 3, we find a standard error, which is add over square of n. And since we have 8 items, so the decrease of freedom is 7. Step 4, we need to find a critical value. The critical value is here, here is tn for half n minus 1, which is 2.998. Step 5, we find a margin of error, which is 2.9947 then 98 conference interval is 115.375 plus or minus 2.9947 which is 112.4 218.4 we are 98 but ensure that the population mean is between 112.4 and 118.4 so that's it for today thank you so much for watching my view I hope you guys find my view helpful and um, see you next time. Bye.